Okay, another uh, video for this series is solving equations when the variable is in the denominator. So we've just learned about inverse variation, and that's y equals k over x. So in many examples, you're going to have to be solving for the unknown, and the unknown will be in the denominator. So anytime you're solving an equation, the, the objective is always to get whatever that variable is by itself. So in this case, the variable you're trying to get by itself starts off in the denominator. But when we say that a variable is by itself, or solved for, we mean like x equals and then whatever we got, so that's solved for x. But this implicitly means that the number that we're solving for, or the variable that we're solving for, x, is in the numerator. If you have 1 over x equals some some stuff, then it's not yet finished solving, because your variable is in the denominator. So we automatically always mean that the variable needs to be in the numerator. So therefore, if the variable starts off in the denominator, our first step is to move it up. And by that I mean find a way to move the variable from the denominator into the numerator. And then once you've got it in the numerator, you solve like normal to get it by itself. So there's two ways, or two, there's probably more than two, but there's two simple ways to move it up. One of the ways is to multiply by the variable. So if you have x in the bottom, multiply both sides by x, and now x will be in the top. The other option is to take the reciprocal of both sides, and that is also called flipping it. So if you had something like 5 over x, if you flip that over, you get x over 5, and now x is in the top. But you have to remember that whatever you do to one side, you also have to do to the other side. So if you take the reciprocal or flip one side of the fraction, you also have to flip the other side, uh, and then solve like normal. So let's do a quick example here, and then we'll do some more examples on the following slide. First example, let's do 3 over 8 equals 6 over x. So you probably in previous years learned to cross multiply and then divide when you see something like this, when you set up a proportion or a fraction equal to another fraction. And I'm here to tell you that that's certainly one way that you can do it, uh, but I think that's actually more work than you necessarily uh, need to do sometimes. So what I would say is the first thing that you can do here is <coughs> multiply both sides by x. So if you multiply, let me change color so I make it extra obvious. If we multiply by x, and we multiply this side by x, then those cancel out, and we're left with 3x over 8 equals 6. Now, to get rid of uh, x on this side, or sorry, to get x by itself, we have 3 over 8. We could multiply both sides by 8 times 8. That will cancel. And then we could divide both sides by 3, and that will cancel, divide by 3. That's the same you might notice as multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction. And then we get x equals 6 over 3 reduces to a 2, so that reduces to a 2. So 2 times 8 is 16. Okay. Another way that you could have done this problem is from the very beginning, you could have flipped both sides. And I think that way is a little bit better, in my opinion. So we flip this side, and we get 8 over 3. And we flip this side, and we get x over 6. And now, to get x by itself, there's only one step. We multiply both sides by 6. That's cancelled. Multiply by 6. And again, you of course get the same thing. The 6 and the 3 reduce to 2. 2 times 8 is 16. But it's up to you kind of which method you think is simplest. And of course, you could always go back to the oldest method that you learned, probably in pre-algebra or even before that. Cross, multiply, and divide. So if you cross multiply here, you get 8 times 6, which is 48. And if you cross multiply here, you get 3 times x, which is 3x. Then you divide both sides by 3, and you get, of course, x equals 16. So there's all these different ways to do it. The reason that I prefer multiplying by the variable or taking the reciprocal is because in many cases cross multiplying and dividing ends up making you do more steps than you need to. You oftentimes do a step and then undo that same step. And if you have more complicated expressions, it can kind of throw you off. However, um, it's a good thing to remember because if you don't know any other way to do it, that way will work. Okay, let's try some more examples here. So let's try um, 2 over x plus 4 equals 3 over 6. Okay, so again, in a situation like this, you have something in the denominator with a variable in it, in this case, x plus 4. So it's important that even if these aren't, <coughs> even if there aren't parentheses around this x plus 4, 
you implicitly know that they're there because they're in the this whole piece is in the denominator of a fraction. So when you multiply both sides by x plus 4, x plus 4 here, and then x plus 4 here, these will cancel out. And that's just like cross multiplying, right? You're multiplying this thing by this thing. So these two are getting multiplied together. And then um, you're going to multiply both sides by 6. So we get times 6. That cancels times 6. That's this cross multiply here. So 2 times 6. So you have 12 equals 3 parentheses x plus 4. And now from here, you have a lot of different options. You could distribute the 3 inside, or you could divide both sides by 3. Now, since this number over here is divisible by 3, I think dividing by 3 is the easier choice. So we have 4 equals x plus 4, and then we can subtract 4, and you can immediately see that we're going to have x equals 0. So let's go back and look at our original problem and see if that makes sense. We had 2 over x plus 4 equals 3 over 6. Well, 3 over 6 is 1 half. You can see that. And 2 over 4 is 1 half. So this x right here, we wanted it to not count for anything. Otherwise, it would throw this off. So x equals 0 is a good answer. OK, let's try one more example. Um, we could do something more complex. What if you have x plus 2 over x minus 1 equals I don't know, negative 3 fifths. Okay, here, cross multiplying really is what you're going to end up doing, because if you want this variable in the denominator, you multiply both sides by x minus here. Let me switch colors so we can follow along easier. Multiply both sides by x minus 1, x minus 1, and now this cancels with this. And one thing I want to caution you against is I see a lot of students when they want to multiply both sides by something like x minus 1, on this side they'll put it in the numerator, which is proper. On this side though, they'll write it kind of right here. They'll put this little times x plus 1 right here, and then they'll cancel these two out. Now even though you know what you're talking about and you're right in your head what you're doing, it's important mathematically to show this the proper way, which is this part has to be in the numerator and this part has to be in the denominator. Because if you multiply this in the denominator and then you cross them off, you're really leading yourself towards bad habits in, in trying to remember which things are going to cancel out and which things aren't. Because if you multiply the denominator by x minus 1, then in the denominator you would not have them cancel out. You'd have something even more. Okay, so now we have x plus 2 equals negative 3 fifths x minus 1. We could distribute this negative 3 fifths over here. Um, but since it's a nasty fraction, we don't want to deal with fractions, the easier thing to do is multiply both sides by 5. So if we cancel the 5 out here, and we multiply the 5 up here, um, that's the same as multiplying it by 5 here and canceling. So those two 5's canceled out, this 5's here. Now we distribute, and we get 5 times x plus 2 times 5, which is oops, plus 10 equals, and then over here we distribute, negative 3x and negative 3 times negative 1 is plus 3. Now we're going to try to get all the x's together on one side and all the variables together on the other side. So I can add 3x here, and I can do this all in one step. So I've got the x's on the left side, and I want to get the numbers on the right side. So I'll go minus 10 and minus 10. These will cancel out, leaving me with 8x on the left, and positive 3 minus 10 will give me a negative 7 on the right. And then the last step is to divide by 8, divide by 8. So those cancel. And my answer is x equals negative 7 eighths. So the moral of the story here is you have a method already, which is cross, multiply, and divide. If the part is more complex in the denominator, make sure that you remember to multiply by the entire denominator, not just the x or the 4. Like, you can't go in here and start subtracting 4 or anything like that. It's the entire piece that has to be dealt with. And then once it's in the numerator, you can distribute or combine like terms or whatever it is like that. Um, and also, if you want, you can flip over both sides of the fraction if that seems to make things easier for you.